And you remember I mentioned that this was the first church to be planted in Europe, which was planted, as we are told, around the AD 61, which is something like 20 to 25 years after Christ had already gone. So it's quite new, fresh, inexperienced church, passing through things, a church that had both Jewish believers and non-Jewish believers, which was why he set out calling them saints in Christ, uh, assuring them that they were all part of the body, no matter where they came from, Jews or non-Jews, writing to them with this subject of joy and rejoicing. So this morning, Looking at the second part of this chapter, I'd like to zero in on the 21st verse and bring a question to us that I'd like us to ponder on. What are you living for? What are you living for? We know that people, both those who are living and those who are living now and those who will live up, live up for us, will actually live for something and most people are known for something and I will bring up some pictures as a way of introducing these and ask you what you know about these people or, or maybe what they live for or what they are known for and we will proceed from there. <coughs> that. And I will propose to us. 
was, I was suggesting was there are two things <coughs> among every other thing that we should be living for. Number one, I think we should be living to exalt Christ and also we should be living to serve others. Not really being selfish, but when we live to exalt Christ, we will also serve others. And as we saw from uh, the place we read, some people preach Christ out of selfish gain. And some people today sadly belong to churches or organizations or dots. What, what is it? It means for me. What is it means for me? But if we live to exalt Christ, we should also live to serve others, yeah. not about ourselves. So, is it all about Christ? <coughs> or is it that everyone looks out for his own interests and not those of Christ? It's funny. The same chapter 21 and verse <laughs> chapter 1, verse 21 and chapter 1, and the same 21 and 2. So we choose what do we want to believe for. So like I said, I'll propose to us two things we should be living for. Living to exalt Christ and living to serve Christ. It's interesting that no matter what he passed through, he saw those things as the things that helped him to advance the gospel. He begins by demonstrating his faith, even in difficult situation. Now I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that what has happened to me has actually served to advance the gospel. So remember I said he wrote this, uh, this uh, um, book while in prison. We are told he was actually under house arrest in Rome and waiting for trial. He, he didn't know what would become of him at that time, yet he went on to preach the gospel. So if I am living to exalt Christ, what happens to me shouldn't even devour me and prevent me from living and preaching Christ. In fact, I should be able to use every opportunity I find to represent Christ. He realized that his current situation, they were not as important as what he did with them. That once in my life I was praying and I, was, I kept thinking, it doesn't actually matter with what happens to you, but what do you make with what happens to you? Do you turn around your stumbling blocks as stepping stones? There are stumbling blocks everywhere. But the apostle turned them onto stepping stones. And I think only faith in Christ will sustain us when we are faced with these sort of things. Only the faith we have in Christ. When I was reading this passage, I was drawn to verse 18. He was already in prison, not yet sure of what his you know, future will be. For he said this, what then? Only that in every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is preached. And in this, I will rejoice. Yes, I will rejoice. He was still saying in future tense that he will rejoice. Even now, yes, I will rejoice. So he knew that come what may, that he will continue to rejoice. Amen. 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 And he went on to preach uh, to the palace guards as we see in verse 13. And he was under his arrest but he was given some level of, of freedom to still entertain visitors and you know be able to share the gospel with them. And so he shared the gospel to the extent that he went on in verse 14 to say that some brethren have become confident by my chains and much more bold to speak the word without fear because of what he did, because of the way he conducted himself and still went on to preach the gospel. He encouraged others. 
You see, sometimes people might not have the opportunity of hearing from us. But our actions and the way we carry ourselves will even be the gospel that we hear. We have Bibles in this country. It's one of those things I, 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 you know, I like to say here. Now, when I, I came in, I saw we have, we have several translations. Name them. Software, hard copies, yet most people don't read the Bible. But there, there are some places that in the whole community, they will only have one hard copy Bible. Yes, they scramble, to, they devour it, they read it. But this generation, we have Bibles everywhere, on our phone, on our iPad, yet we don't read it. <clears throat> we don't. <clears throat> I, I pray that our lives become the gospel themselves as we carry out our day-to-day -day duties and wherever we live. God will help us and will say like the Apostle Paul, like what I have done will serve as confidence to the others. That's what 21, like I said, for to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. Mm -hmm. To live is Christ mm -hmm. and to die. He was in that, that state that he was not afraid of death. was not afraid of what will happen afterwards. But, you know, before, before we die, we, we will live. Right? Most people consider the second aspect of dying and death. But I want us to think about living, first of all. So before we die, let's live for Christ. Let's exalt Him. Let's live for Him. Living to serve others. I believe that the gospel should be shared. I believe that the good news is not good news if we don't share. Mm. If we don't share, it's no use. <coughs> the, the news we, we, you know, we <coughs> You know, we are like people who are holding things to ourselves. If you have something precious, you should be able to share with others. Mm. And there are different ways of, of doing so. We, we are all evangelists, right? But we might not be able to, you know, stand on the street corner or, you know, go door to door. But we, we all would do them in our different ways. Like I said, and I keep saying, it could be the, the simple smile, the, the simple hospitality we share with, with others. It could be that, 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 you know, the help we offer to others. When I first came uh, to this country, I was riding on a bus. Uh, I remember on, on a certain day in the bus in Sheffield, an uh, elderly person came along and I stood up. Uh, this wasn't in the designated uh, places, and I stood, stood up for, for, for her to sit down, and I, I felt awkward, yeah. you know, people looking at me. <laughs> but that's how I grew up, right? And you never can tell those sort of, sort of things you do to, to, for people, you know, taking things and, and, you know, helping along and smiling, and it could be the gospel that people will receive. But what I'm saying is that we should leave to serve others Amen. and share the gospel yes. of Christ. Amen. 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 And you remember St. Francis, Francis. I always pray every day that the Lord will make me a channel of his peace. Amen. The channel of his blessing. That I will live for him and serve others. And that the Lord will use me as instruments Amen. of his blessing. Amen. So I would like us to conclude by you know singing that, that song and also saying you know let's let's kind of ponder on the fact that the apostle is inviting us today to live for Christ. Amen. And as we go on this week, whatever we do, wherever we go, let's look at look out for those moments, those that opportunity to serve others, to, to serve people. Uh, you might not be like me to stand up for someone in the bus, but it could go a long way. You know, you could you know, go shopping for someone, you could ring someone up, you know, if you don't see them in church, you, you could ring them up, you know, you could invite them for a meal as 
I'll be in three times this week, this weekend. Beautiful, beautiful. Uh, you didn't know I, I love seafood, but yeah, it's another call for another day. We could do all these things and let Christ use us for His glory. So we will conclude with that song. As we're saying, ponder on this and look out this week, like I said, how will I serve people? Lord, give me the opportunity to serve others. Amen. 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 Amen.